Greetings and welcome back to Here's What I Heard. I'm Laura Degatis, your hostess. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Now, I'm sure everyone is sick to death by now of hearing about the debates. This one did this, this one said that, he wouldn't do this, and he's not going to do that, and he's going to do this, and this is going to be a disaster, and da 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 So, I'm going to discuss the refusal of denouncement argument instead. Only three things happened for me tonight. Number one, Donald Trump refused to condemn white supremacy. Number two, the President of the United States refused to condemn white supremacy. Number three, you know what's coming next, and you don't need three guesses. The Commander in Chief refused to condemn white supremacy on the global stage in front of my children, in front of everybody's families, and he was given the opportunity multiple times to condemn white supremacy. And he gave a wink and a nod to a racist, Nazi, murderous organization that is now celebrating online, that is now saying we have a go ahead. Look at what they're saying. Look at what the Proud Boys are doing right now online because the President of the United States refused to condemn white supremacy. That's the only thing that happened tonight. Before I go on, allow me to take care of some administration work. You can fast forward through this part if you'd like. First, welcome to all my new subscribers. Thank you for being here. You have brought me just a little bit closer to being able to go live and share your stories and thoughts. You've also brought me a little bit closer to being able to share stories and adventures about our latest family edition in the community page that I'm supposed to get when I get a thousand subscriptions. So I don't really have a deadline per se, but it would be really, really nice and not too aggressive of a goal. Uh, to have a thousand subscriptions by the new year. That's like three months. I'm pretty slow too, so <laughs> until then, I'll give you a short update right now. Of course, you can see Bonkers in my arms, falling asleep in my arms as usual. Uh, she's going to the vet on Tuesday to get spayed. That's early next week. So please keep her in your thoughts. I'm sure she'll be fine, but sometimes that changes a kitty, and we we but we still can't have a bunch of kitties running around. I'm gonna barely be able to afford her. 
And second, if you'd like to help me grow, if you'd like to help my page grow into a live feed call in talk show where we can hear what you heard too, I've been told that the best thing that you can do is share my videos. Sharing somehow or another triggers the algorithm that helps channels to grow. But also, I ask you to please subscribe, comment, like, and of course a donation would be the ultimate. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. All my links for support and everything are below in the description and uh, thanks you, thank you in advance for your time and support. Okay. First, my opinion on this particular segment of the debate. You have repeatedly we criticized the, the vice president for not specifically calling out Antifa and other left-wing extremist right. groups. But are you willing tonight to condemn white supremacists and militia groups sure. and to say that they need to stand down and not add to the violence in a number of these cities, as we saw in Kenosha and as we've seen in Portland. Sure, Are you I'm prepared to, to do specifically that, do it? Well, I, go would ahead, say, I would say almost everything I see is from the left wing, not from the right so wing. What now, aside from the fact that Trump has literally denounced groups like this, the white supremacists, the neo-1940s Germans, any hate group that you could possibly name, since the very beginning of his campaign, and even before that, in fact, Chris Squalis was actually the person that asked him that question the last time he went up and did a, 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 a debate like this. Yet, as many times as he's already denounced it, they continue to ask him again and again. So now I, myself, would imagine that his kind of lethargic answers, or not even lethargic, it's like, yeah, no-brainer type of thing, is because you really do get tired of being asked and having to answer the same question over and over and over and over, knowing the answer already, only to try and get a different answer, and it is quite tiring. Especially when there's so much else going on and so much else being done. Now, I know I get tired of being asked the same question over and over again. Because you know you'll get asked that question again. Because essentially, they don't believe, they actually don't believe him uh, to begin with, no matter what he says. So it's funny to think that they would believe him, though, if he did admit to being an ist. Because that's really all they want to hear anyway. So yeah, the whole time he says, no, 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 I'm not an ist. I'm not this. I'm not this. Look at what I've done for these people. The minute he would admit anything having to do with being actually admitting that, uh, even if it was perceived, they would believe that. So why would they not believe him in one instance? And then all of a sudden, if he changes his mind, they're going to believe him. I sure wouldn't. That's not the way things work. Let's see. In fact, when he had a conference the very next day, he denounced it again. So, uh, and of course, the very next day after that, what do we see? Kaylee McEnany's press conference the next day, the very first question. Uh, Kaylee, if I could start off. Um I'd like to ask you for a definitive and declarative statement without ambiguity or deflection. As the person who speaks for the president, does the president denounce white supremacism and groups that espouse it in all their forms? And of course, the way that was worded told you that no matter how she answered, he wasn't going to believe or accept hers or his answer anyway. At this point, I'd have to pose the question back. How many times do you want him to say it? And why is it the only thing on you, on your all's mind? The only thing you can ask about? It's like, are you guys broken records on purpose? Or are you just looking for that sound bite that's going to make you viral? Because face it, that's mainly what these, are, what these folks are doing. I, I really don't want to hear from these talking heads. You know, they want to ask a question, that's fine. I want to hear from the people who are actually in charge, who are actually we voted for, who actually are taking care of this business. Not these guys that have 
that try to go viral on some somebody's mistake maybe or something actually tell me what's going on it's actually my job to decide who's lying or not also since they were asking both candidates the same questions why didn't Biden get asked to disavow anyone except by Trump has uh Joe Biden ever denounced anybody? Personally, I think he's his own hate group. According to what I've seen and what I saw over the last 50 years of Biden's tenure, he, he doesn't need any of the protesters help. I can assure you of that. I think that. the two-party system, although my Democratic colleagues won't like me saying this, I think the two-party system is good for the South and good for the n good for the black in the South. Kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. They're going to put you all back in chains. I've, I've had a great relationship. In Delaware, the largest growth in population is Indian Americans moving from India. You cannot go to a 7-Eleven or a Dunkin' Donuts unless you have a slight Indian accent. So for, I'm not joking. More questions, but I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, and you ain't black. Receiving fresh scrutiny comes from his earliest years in the Senate when he strongly opposed mandatory school busing. It was designed to achieve integration and a more equitable education. What's less known is how he followed the lead of some of the Senate's most fervent segregationists. In a series of never before published letters reviewed by CNN, the strength of Biden's opposition to busing comes into sharper focus. On March 25, 1977, Biden wrote, My bill strikes at the heart of the injustice of court-ordered busing. It prohibits the federal courts from disrupting our educational system. Biden sought and received support from Mississippi Senator James Eastland, the Democratic chairman of the Judiciary Committee and a leading symbol of Southern resistance to desegregation. He frequently spoke of blacks as, quote, an inferior race. 30th, 1977, Biden wrote, Dear Mr. Chairman, I want you to know that I very much appreciate your help during this week's committee meeting in attempting to bring my anti-busing legislation to a vote. Then in 1978, Biden again asked Eastland to put his anti-busing bill before the full Senate, writing, Your participation in floor debate would be welcomed. Yes, and by the way, what you all know, but most people don't know, Unlike the African-American community, with notable exceptions, the Latino community is an incredibly diverse community with incredibly different attitudes about different things. Now I'm going to show you Trump's take on these hate groups. In one voice, our nation must condemn racism, bigotry, and white supremacy. These sinister ideologies must be defeated. Hate has no place in America. Hatred warps the mind, ravages the heart, and devours the soul. We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence. It has no place in America. And unite together in condemnation of hatred, bigotry, and violence. Racism is evil. And those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs, including the KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups that are repugnant to everything we hold dear as Americans. And you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence on many sides. On many sides. I totally disavow the Ku Klux Klan. I totally disavow David Duke. I've been doing it now for two weeks. This is, you're probably about the 18th person that's asked me the question. Uh, David Duke is a bad person who I disavowed on numerous occasions over the years. I've rejected David Duke, rejected David Duke. Uh, I've rejected the uh, KKK, the Ku Klux Klan. From the time I'm five years old, I rejected them. Well, you've got David Duke just joined. A bigot, a racist, a problem. I mean, this is not exactly the people you want in your party. I don't like any group of hate. Hate groups are not for me. Now, I'm sure I could find a few more videos about Trump, but we don't want this to be a full-length feature film, now do we? 
Another thing that I can say about the debates is that it really did seem that Joe Biden had a really bad case of TDS as well. Will you who shut is up, on, man. Listen, who is on your list, Joe? Well, it's hard to get any word in with this clown. All right. Ben, he's a fool on this. You're a senator. And You're the, the worst way, president vice... America has ever had. Hey, hey. He's just, he's oh, the you, racist. You, you just don't. Now, we're getting a little bit off topic here, but referring to the videos that you just saw of Joe Biden, when he's not being a bigot, he's pretty much the cover band version of a politician. I don't believe any of his words or ever been any of his own. And I've been listening to both of these men for years. Have you? Joe Biden ran for president in 1988. And I remember this because I was in college. It was a year before, it was before I started comedy. And this is before the internet. Yeah, and the, the guy had to drop off. Well, the guy who beat him in 88 went on to do great, though, right? Oh, the caucus. <laughs> <laughs> Watch this. Candidate Joseph Biden today faces a controversy. Three weeks ago at a debate at the Iowa State Fair, he used phrases identical to those delivered by British Labor Party leader Neil Kinnock. Biden seemed to be claiming Kinnock's vision and life as his own. Why is it that my wife is sitting out there in the audience is the first in her family to ever go to college? Why is Glennis the first woman in her family in a thousand generations to be able to get the university? My ancestors who worked in the coal mines in northeast Pennsylvania and come up after 12 hours and play football. Eight hours underground and then come up and play football. It's because they didn't have a platform upon which to stand. There was no platform upon which they could stand. The notion that every thought or notion or idea you'd have to go back and find and attribute to someone, I think is, quite frankly, uh, ludicrous. The problem here is that Senator Biden told his audience he'd just been thinking about these things, and he failed to give any credit at all to his famous British speechwriter. So th this is the guy they want to run against Trump because Trump's such a big liar. He had to drop out the first time he ran because he got caught being a political plagiarist and lying about it. <laughs> this is the guy. This is the this is the establishment's big idea. I was thinking on the way over here. <laughs> now that's a little too much because as you point out, what's behind the words? What's there? And a lot of people a rap on Biden has always been that it's just a surface. I should have said to paraphrase Neil Kinnock. Hmm. It's the only time I didn't, in all the times I've ever used it. But CBS News found a tape of a second instance. <laughs> it reappeared in the New York Times with a new charge, that Biden had appropriated a famous litany from the late Robert Kennedy about what the gross national product cannot measure. It cannot measure the health of our children. The health of our children. The quality of our education. The quality of their education. The joy of their play. For the joy of their play. Biden gave Kennedy no credit. He has also quoted or paraphrased John Kennedy, Hubert Humphrey, and <laughs> British Labor Party leader Neil Kinnock, all without credit. Joseph Biden admitted today that he committed plagiarism when he was in law school. He said it was a mistake, but that it was unintentional. This is the guy they're running against Trump because he's so corrupt. Now, had I done that in school, they would have kicked me out and ruined my life. But this guy gets many chances, and to some extent, when he was a senator, to run the country? Who will he plagiarize next time? Mao? Chi? Bin Laden? So yeah, after doing a lot of my own research on this subject, I'm never going to believe what anybody else says about the current resident of the White House being a bigot. And if you can't see just what establishment Joe is really like, he's really about, just like you accuse Trump supporters of being just like him, so now can we accuse you of the same with bigot Biden. And you ain't black, and you ain't black, and you ain't black, and you ain't black, and you ain't black. I do hope you enjoyed my work today. It sure took a little bit longer than I wanted it to, but that's why I'm depending on y'all to help keep me working. I have a long way to go to be able to get you guys' voices into the internet sphere of things and virtually the universe. So please, help a girl and her kitten out. Share this and all my other videos. Like, subscribe, comment, and of course a donation would be the ultimate. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. 
In fact, I'm working on a little promotion to send you a little something special uh, when you do donate so that you get more than just my videos here on YouTube. I will announce it somewhere in my next video or two. Uh, and you may just end up with a goddess original creation. Once I plan it all out, like I say, I'll go ahead and announce it on one of my next videos. Until then, thanks again for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Until next time.